newcomer for you, I want to give a big welcome to Steve! <laughs> Steve Burgess, everybody! Thanks, yeah, first time doing stand-up, it's a whole other perspective, because laying down is good, like, you know. Anyway, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you about my friend, uh, Joey, which is, is not, it's not his real name. His real name is uh, Christopher David William II. And so this is when we were in our 20s, and uh, which is like just the other four decades ago. And, uh, you know, I hear this knock on my door, like banging on my door. It's, it's about one in the morning and I'm just about ready to go to sleep. And not like now, you know, now bedtime's like 7.30. And... Oh shit, thanks everyone. <laughs> Uh, I had a little pick-me-up before I got up here. It was like a, a monster, a Red Bull, a five-hour energy shot, a double espresso, and a, and a couple of lines of Adderall. And I'm feeling pretty good. Pretty good. <laughs> we, we used to call that a finals week cocktail. And anyhow, so one o'clock in the morning, there's this banging on the door. Back then, we didn't actually have SWAT teams, and I hardly had any stash at all in the apartment, so I figured, this is safe enough, right? So I go over and open the door, and there's my friend, Chris. <coughs> hey, Chris, Chris, Steve, I can't take it anymore. Like, Chris, come in, please, sit down. Can I get you a beer, a, a tea, a, a finals week cocktail? And he's like, oh, oh, Steve, I just can't take it anymore. I'm like, what is it, Chris? What can't you take anymore? Like, I'm 23 years old and I'm still a virgin. So I realize there's not too many millennials in here to be going, 23, still a virgin, what's the big deal? It's my life. But you know, <laughs> in the 70s, in the 70s, we didn't have 23 year old virgins. And I mean, we didn't know everything. Like, I just found out that polyamorous doesn't mean you love the school. But anyway, so he's, he's sitting there, I can't take it anymore. I said, Chris, well, you know, I'd like to help you out. But what can I do? He says, tell me what to do. I said, tell you what to tell you. You've always had a girlfriend. Tell me what to do. And actually, you know, he would know because he was kind of like there at the start when we were teenagers and we had this, you know, event away from home. And there are a bunch of young Santa Barbarians and a couple of hotel rooms. And there was this one Lumpuckian, uh, Meg. And, well, let's just say, Meg made me a man. And it was that night Meg made me a man. But the next morning, you know, Meg and I are under the covers, you know, cuddling, and, uh, <laughs> and Chris is across the room you know, on the couch, and he's like, guys, I gotta take a whiz. And we're like, go ahead. And he said, but I'm naked. And we're like, so are we. And, oh, that was loud. And, <laughs> And so he goes, all right, I'm getting, I'm gonna go. And he jumps out of, out of the couch and he walks across graciously, gracefully across that, you know. And, and we're, but I just wanted to say that that is evidence that, you know, he knew me from before. So he's like, you always had a girl, tell me what to do. Right. Well, Chris, brush your teeth. Because he had that, like, you could cut through with your finger, that kind of thing. And, Brush your teeth, and take it, eat up. And, 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 uh, and I said, you know, take a shower and, you know, get some clean clothes. Go to the free box and get some clean clothes out of there. And, and also those pants, I realized he was probably actually forward thinking this doesn't make sense to a modern audience, but I'm like, get some pants that aren't all shredded and don't hang off your ass. He's like, okay, I'll do it, I'll do it. Uh, tell me what to say. To tell you what to say. And I'm thinking, well, you know, you just kind of get comfortable with a lady. So I say, well, Chris, you know, what you do is you just be yourself. He says, I don't want to be myself. I'm tired of being myself. Being myself doesn't work. Tell me what to say. I'm like, oh, geez, you know. So I think back to a time when, you know, a conversation led to being in the sack. So I just like think of that conversation. I tell him word for word. And look, honestly aside, I don't know who's more pathetic here. Chris, who's at least honest about his patheticism, or you know, Steve Burgess, who thinks he knows how to talk to women. But anyway, he, he says, okay, I'll do it, I'll do it. 
and he goes off. Thanks, you're a pal. I love you. So a couple of weeks later, I'm working in the New York Hero House, a sandwich shop in Isla Vista, and what you know, making the sandwiches. And uh, and who do I see walking down the street? It's somebody who looks really familiar. And I, oh my God, it's Chris. And he looks like clean, and he's got clean clothes, and he's got a big ass smile on his face, like wrapped around his head, kind of shit eating grin. And, he walks in, and I go, just a minute, Chris. I finished with the customers, and out they go with their sandwiches, and I go, you got laid? He says, how did you know? And I thought, just some kind of intuition, so tell me, tell me what happened. So like, well, I was at a party, and I did just what you said, and I said just what you said to say, and I'm dying inside. But anyway, he says, and it worked. I, I went to a party, and I got laid, and we're still hanging out. I said, well, bring her in, you know? So he comes in the next day, and with this young lady, he's looking clean, and she's looking, you know, clean. And, and, uh, and uh, they, they share an eggplant parmesan sandwich, and he pays for half of it. I'm thinking, this must be true love, because I've never seen him pay for anything in his life. I've never seen him pay for half of anything in his life. And so they come in a couple more times. They seem to be getting along fine. And, so then I don't see him for a few days. And sure enough, not too long after, I see him come walking down the street. And he doesn't look too good. And I'm like, Chris, what's the deal? What, what happens? Me and Meg, I'm sorry, Meg's mine. Me and Kim, he wasn't with Meg. Me and Kim, we broke up. I'm like, oh, dude, I'm sorry, what happened? He says, she was just using me for sex. <laughs> anyway, that's my story about Chris. And, uh, uh, ping me if you need a recipe for half an eggplant sandwich. And uh, drink beer. Yeah. Give it up for Steve Burgess. Yeah. Definitely, uh, yeah, drink more beer. That's always a good thing. Um, we also have a tip jar over here. We can start passing that around. Mother, you're hogging it. <laughs> um.